In a significant development for NASA's lunar exploration plans, the agency has unveiled the design of SpaceX's Starship Cargo Lunar Lander. This unveiling marks a crucial step forward in NASA's ambitious goal of returning to the moon within the next few years. The Starship Lunar Cargo Lander design showcases a sleek and futuristic appearance embodying the cutting-edge technology that SpaceX is known for. With its streamlined silhouette and advanced features, the lander represents a significant leap in lunar exploration capabilities. However, as with any complex engineering project, there are bound to be challenges and potential issues to address. While the design of the Starship Lunar Cargo Lander is undoubtedly impressive, it may still face hurdles in terms of technical feasibility, operational efficiency, and cost effectiveness. In today's episode of Great SpaceX, we'll delve deeper into the details of the Starship Lunar Cargo Lander design, exploring its innovative features and a assessing any potential challenges that lie ahead. After more than a century since NASA's last human landing mission, the journey back to the moon is now filled with renewed excitement fueled by the involvement of new players such as China, India, and Japan. However, it's clear that the United States will continue to lead this race, particularly with the support of pioneering companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin. As part of the initial plan, SpaceX's Starship HLS version is set to land humans on the lunar surface. However, there's another crucial component in the equation, the Starship Cargo Lunar Lander. This variant will be tasked with transporting and safely landing crewed rovers on the moon's rugged terrain. In an announcement made on January 9th, NASA revealed its strategic approach. NASA also shared that it has asked both Artemis human landing system providers, SpaceX and Blue Origin, to begin applying knowledge gained in developing their future systems as part of their existing contracts toward variations to potentially deliver large cargo on later missions. This directive underscores NASA's forward-thinking approach, leveraging the expertise and capabilities of its partners to adapt and innovate ultimately paving the way for future lunar exploration missions. As SpaceX and Blue Origin continue to refine their technologies, the prospect of delivering large cargo to the lunar surface is becoming increasingly feasible, bringing us one step closer to unlocking the mysteries of our celestial neighbor. This new requirement set by NASA marks an evolution in the contractual obligations for both SpaceX and Blue Origin, building upon the foundation of their previously awarded contracts. The focus now shifts to the development of a cargo ship variant, which is anticipated to carry a payload ranging from 26,000 to 33,000 pounds, or 12 to 15 tons, to the lunar surface. Importantly, this cargo variant is slated for deployment ahead of the Artemis 7 mission. NASA envisions these cargo versions to be derived from the human landing systems currently in development for Artemis 3, 4, and 5. Modifications will primarily revolve around adapting the landers for payload interfaces and deployment mechanisms mechanisms, with the exclusion of human life support systems. In essence, SpaceX's Starship Cargo Lander will undergo relatively few changes compared to its crewed counterpart. It will still feature a payload door designed to open and deploy payloads, albeit likely with slight enlargements to accommodate larger payloads such as rovers. Moreover, the Starship Cargo Lander will retain an elevator system similar to that of the Starship HLS. This system will be instrumental in lowering the rover from the lander to the lunar surface descending from a considerable height. While specifics regarding the design of this elevator system remain undisclosed, it may incorporate door and barrier systems akin to those of the crew elevator, or it could utilize a system of ropes for gradual descent. Further updates from SpaceX are eagerly awaited to shed more light on this aspect of the mission. In terms of payload, a Starship cargo lander can carry at least three pressurized crewed rovers per landing. That's because the Starship HLS's payload compartment will have have a height of about 18 meters and a diameter of 9, creating a volume of more than a thousand cubic meters. This is entirely feasible so that the Starship cargo lander can accommodate three rovers or more. Right now, we still don't know the exact mass of each rover. NASA's requirement is 12 to 15 tons before Artemis 7, which means the companies will have four missions to do that and each mission will have to carry three to four tons. That doesn't seem to be too difficult for SpaceX and the Starship cargo lander 
cylinder because the original Starship can carry up to 150 tons of payload to LEO. It may be a little less if landing on the moon, but still enough to meet NASA's requirements. For a comparison, we will see that the Starship cargo lander's capabilities will be significantly better than Blue Origin's Blue Moon. In October last year, Blue Origin unveiled the 16-meter Blue Moon Mark I version, but Blue Moon's design won't be fully optimized for payload, so it may not hold less than three rovers, perhaps just one or two. Luckily, Blue Origin still expects each Blue Moon flight to be able to carry three tons to anywhere on the moon, so we can believe it can completely meet NASA's requirements. In addition to payload design considerations, ensuring stability on the lunar surface is a critical aspect that SpaceX must address for the Starship cargo lander. Indeed, this issue has gained significant prominence following several lunar missions from late last year to early this year, all of which encountered challenges related to lander stability. Notably, instances of landers tipping over on the moon have drawn considerable attention, exemplified by Japan's slim mission and intuitive machine's Nova C Odysseus. In the case of Nova C, the tipping issue stemmed from an error in the navigation system, whereas slim encountered problems attributable to the landing engine system. In addition to technical challenges related to the vehicle themselves, the risk of tipping over on the lunar surface also stems from the natural characteristics of the moon, particularly in the southern polar region, where the Artemis missions are targeted. This region experiences extreme temperatures, dropping as low as negative 240 degrees Celsius, or negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which can significantly impact electronic devices. Moreover, the rugged terrain characterized by a large volcanic system poses a significant challenge for landing vehicles. Even smaller landers like Nova C, Odysseus, and Slim have encountered tipping issues in indicating the potential for similar challenges with larger vehicles like the Starship HLS and the Starship Cargo Lander. Given its height of 50 meters and a diameter of only 9, maintaining balance becomes inherently difficult for the Starship, and a crash would likely result in mission failure with no recourse for recovery. To mitigate these risks, SpaceX must prioritize the development of reliable landing legs to ensure the safety of the landing process. However, the path to improvement in this area remains uncertain. One potential approach could involve carefully selecting landing sites with relatively flat terrain, thereby minimizing the risk of tipping over. By upgrading both the navigation and engine systems to enhance precision and control, SpaceX can increase the likelihood of successful landings. While progress in engine system upgrades is evident through Starship's integrated test flights, the effectiveness of navigation system enhancements will become clearer with future landing attempts, particularly as SpaceX begins landing trials with the Super Heavy and Starship. Successfully executing complex maneuvers like those required for the Mechazilla R landing demonstrates SpaceX's capability, suggesting that precise navigation and landing on specific lunar sites are within reach. In addition to the rovers previously mentioned, the Starship Cargo Lander may also play a role in deploying another rover developed by one of the three teams recently chosen by NASA. These teams, led by Intuitive Machines, Lunar Outpost, and Venturi Astrolab, have been selected to develop their versions of the Lunar Terrain Vehicle, or LTV. This rover will be utilized by Artemis astronauts to navigate the moon's southern polar region starting in 2030. Vanessa Wyke, director of NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, expressed anticipation anticipation for the development of the Artemis Generation Lunar Exploration Vehicle. She highlighted its significance in advancing lunar exploration efforts and enhancing astronauts' capabilities to explore and conduct scientific research on the lunar surface. Additionally, the rover will serve as a science platform during intervals between crewed missions, further facilitating scientific endeavors on the moon. Over the next 12 months, each team will further develop its rover concept, aiming to secure the opportunity to construct the official rover for the mission through an LTV services contract valued at $4.6 billion. The selected team or teams will not only construct their rover, but also ensure its delivery to the moon's south polar region. Once deployed, the LTV will mark the U.S.'s first lunar car since the Lunar Roving Vehicle, introduced during the Apollo 15 mission in 1971. While sharing similarities with the iconic moon buggy, such as being unpressurized, requiring astronauts to remain suited, the new machine will boast a notable advantage 
advancement, the ability to operate autonomously even without a driver present. This capability will facilitate ongoing scientific activities even in the absence of crew members on the lunar surface. The focus of these activities will be near the moon's south pole where NASA intends to establish one or more Artemis bases. NASA's goal is to have an LTV operational on the moon before the arrival of the Artemis V crew in 2030 or potentially even earlier. Given SpaceX's extensive involvement in launching lunar missions in recent years, the SpaceX cargo lander appears to be the most suitable vehicle for this mission. With their track record of success in previous moon missions, this endeavor is likely well within their capabilities. In the coming years, SpaceX and Starship face a multitude of challenges on the horizon. Alongside the monumental task of returning humans to the moon after decades, SpaceX is gearing up for large-scale cargo missions. This surge in activity underscores humanity's unwavering determination to establish a lasting presence on the lunar surface during this historic return. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.